In one of the mining regions of old France, strange phenomena were taking place, giving rise to legends about a terrible monster that had sat underground for 3,000 years, mutating into a dreadful creature. The year is 1965. A young man named Amir has a terrible dream in which miners die trying to escape from a dreadful creature. Waking up from the nightmare, he hurries to the call of a friend who reminds him that they should leave soon if they want to get a job. Soon the boys reach the recruitment point where those wishing to get a hard but well-paid job in the mine are gathering. The foreman holds two stamps in his hands, a red one for those who are not suitable and a green one for the selected. He starts moving along the line. Amir is rejected, but in desperation he snatches the green stamp from the recruiter's hand and stamps himself with several green imprints. Laughing at the boy, they take him on. He heads to a mining company in the north of France in the Pas-de-Calais region. Amir is happy, not knowing that he has been assigned to the fifth mine, which the miners call the Devil's House. One day, a famous scientist, Professor Berthier, arrives, needing to descend specifically into that fifth mine, usually reserved for the offenders. At that moment, an injured miner is brought to the surface, carried by the foreman, Roland. Berthier declares that he wants to go down with him. At this time, reinforcements from Morocco arrive at the mine, and Amir is assigned to Roland's crew. He gets acquainted with the miners, and one of them, Santini, shows him how everything works there. Roland assigns an experienced mentor to the newcomer and orders the descent to begin. In the mine, Amir feels quite uncomfortable, but at depth, like everyone else, he lights his headlamp and takes up the tools. The work is very hard, and the boy injures his hand with a jackhammer. Roland sends him to the horsekeeper. Amir is surprised to see a living horse, which is also blind. It turns out it will soon be replaced by machinery, and this horse is the last in the mine. Later, Roland notices that a rat has crawled into Amir's bag and bitten his lunch. He explains that rats sense danger, so miners feed them. He gives the boy an apple in exchange for the spoiled sandwich and orders him to continue working. After the shift, Amir feels incredibly tired, but is not willing to give up. A week later, Roland announces that Professor Berthier will join them in the mine that day, and they will be well paid for it. The professor explains that he needs to reach a certain place for which the miners need to blow up a wall. Soon, people descend into the depths, and Roland tasks the sapper. After the explosion, a hole appears in the floor. The miners are surprised. Working with such voids below is dangerous. Roland tries to find out what exactly the professor is looking for. Not getting an answer, he throws Berthier's notebook down the hole. The professor volunteers to go down first, as he needs to find it. Soon the professor finds himself in the dungeon of the old mine. The others follow and Roland recalls the old miner's legend about the curse of saint Louis. It is said that 100 years ago, the old mine caught fire, they couldn't extinguish it, and 30 miners could not escape. Then they bricked up this mine, leaving the body somewhere here. While the miners are looking around, Berthier disappears. Roland divides his men into two groups, which go in different directions in search of Berthier. People are shouting, calling for the professor, but he does not respond. Suddenly, Amir's group finds a human skeleton holding a strange polyhedron in its hands. The young man takes it, then examines the dead man's hands and notices that his fingers are crushed. On the wall, there is an inscription stating that all who are here are cursed because they are hunted by a monster that hides in the darkness. Santini jokes, easing his friend's tension. They move on and meet up with Roland's group, who have also found human bones. Here they notice light ahead, clearly Berthier. Soon the miners catch up to him and demand an answer as to why they were brought down here, because no one believes the nonsense about samples anymore. He promises to tell everything if they make another passage. The sapper conducts another blast, opening the entrance to the next dungeon. Berthier rushes in and marvels at the hieroglyphs covering the walls. He does indeed take samples from the walls, explaining that they are several thousand years old, while the rest move on and find a whole pile of human bones mixed with old weapons. Berthier cannot explain what happened here. Maybe these were guards who protected a sacred place. And then the flashlight beams illuminate an ancient sarcophagus. Berthier explains that according to legend, this could be an ancient deity that dwelled in these dungeons. The professor takes pictures of the place when Roland demands they return. The miners head to the exit, where the ladder is already set up and the horse is waiting. But it suddenly breaks free and runs into the darkness. No one understands what happened when there is a collapse, and the entrance to the dungeon is blocked by stones. 
When people come to their senses, it turns out that Santini is seriously injured. It turns out that there is no one in the mine above because Berthier demanded complete secrecy. Roland, barely containing his anger, curses the scientist, but they need to take care of the wounded. He sends the others to look for passages while he sets the injured man's leg. The men disperse in different directions while Roland shares his thoughts with one of the miners. When they get out, the mine will likely be closed and scientists will come here. Meanwhile, Amir finds colleagues who have returned to the sarcophagus and are trying to open it. The young man asks them not to do it, but they do not listen. However, the lid is too heavy and does not yield to brute force. Then Amir remembers the polyhedron he found, pulls it out, finds a hole in the lid of the stone box, inserts the find into it, a click sounds, and the lid shifts. Beneath it is something covered with fabric, on top of which lie precious ingots. The miners rush to collect them, since the mine will now be closed and they will be left without means. Amir tries to dissuade them, but they chase him away, threatening violence if he betrays them. Amir runs off into the darkness and, sitting down by the wall, cries out of self-pity. Meanwhile, those left at the sarcophagus argue about the inadmissibility of disrespecting the dead and do not notice something rising from the sarcophagus. Amir hears wild screams and sees the miners who desecrated the tomb running. The three of them return to the others and try to tell them that something alive is behind them. Roland doesn't believe it when long, bony fingers emerge from the darkness and drag one of the miners away. The rest run away in horror, and soon they find a bloody trail leading to the corpse of their unfortunate comrade. Berthier is taken seriously, and he confesses that they will not be disturbed for another ten hours. He knows nothing specific about this place. There is data that it was an unknown civilization that lived here for centuries. They believed in the god from the sarcophagus, who supposedly descended from the sky more than 3,000 years ago and worshipped him because they were afraid. But then Amir joins the conversation because it's not a sarcophagus, but a prison. He can draw a map of the dungeon and show where everything is. And then everyone remembers Santini and rushes to the debris. Meanwhile, the wounded man hears strange sounds and, lighting the corridor with his lamp, suddenly sees something huge with long clawed hands and screams in horror. The miners who arrive find only the empty stretcher on which their comrade was lying, but directing the light into the shaft, they see the monster holding Santini in its claws and then tearing him apart in front of the people. The enraged men rush forward, but the creature releases the miner and disappears into the darkness. However, they cannot save their friend, and he dies in their arms. The miners decide to lure the monster into one of the tunnels and blow it up with the remaining explosives, but they have to decide whether to kill the monster or escape themselves. Then Berthier suggests returning to the grave to read the inscriptions. Most likely they indicate a way out because the ancient inhabitants must have had a way to get here. The miners go to the grave and soon find a place where human skeletons lie between iron bars. At first glance, it looks like a prison, but Berthier explains that these were volunteers who were sacrificed to the god. At least, that's what is written on the wall. They go further and find blood on the walls, and inside the burial chamber, there's a whole pool of it. Berthier volunteers to go there first, and Amir accompanies him. Inside, they see only the corpse of a horse, but as soon as they enter the chamber, the professor presses a secret lever, and the entrance closes with a stone. Amir screams in horror, and Berthier is surprised. Did he really think he could trust the miners? As soon as he finds the way out, they would just kill him. Berthier and Amir start reading the inscriptions on the walls and learn that there are nine such graves around the world. At the right time, the sleepers will wake up, and until then, they must be fed by volunteers. But in the end, some lord must appear who will kill these monsters and take the predominant place. Then Amir finds a palindrome, a phrase that reads the same from the beginning and the end. It leads the professor to conclude that the entrance is simultaneously the exit. Amir rushes to the lever when the corpse of the horse begins to move and a monster rises from it. It spreads its terrible arms when the professor himself steps into its embrace, rejoicing at the first contact with an alien. Amir sees him die in the arms of the monster and runs to the lever. The miners on the other side help him get out and close the door again. Amir promises to lead everyone out based on the professor's notes, unaware that the monster is already opening the door. Soon, the men stop at a crossroads, and while Amir is reading the notes, they suddenly hear characteristic sounds. Roland suggests turning off the light, and everything goes quiet. 
But when they light the lamps, the monster is very close. It kills one of them with a single blow and drags another into the darkness. Amir and Roland manage to escape. The foreman asks the young man to find a way out, but he suddenly warns that the monster will kill the entire village if it gets out. Roland is furious. He has lost all his friends and Amir is nothing to him, so from this moment on, they will go their separate ways. But Amir talks about the palindrome and points in the direction. And soon they come out to a new bone graveyard, which turns out to be long lost miners. Roland realizes the only way out was here, but it was bricked up when the mine collapsed. However, there's a well for sacrifices that leads straight to the surface. Amir immediately understands where they need to go, but suddenly the monster's hands appear in the opening of the debris. It grabs the young man by the legs and drags him under the stones. Roland can do nothing and is left alone. After experiencing a bout of despair, he opens the professor's notes, takes all the remaining explosives, and starts back. Soon, he finds the well filled with human bones. Meanwhile, Amir regains consciousness and sees before him a monster sitting on a throne, holding one of the miners in its hands. He pleads with the creature to release his friend, groping on the ground for an iron knife. But the monster tears off the captive's head, which suddenly starts talking to Amir on behalf of the alien, demanding to be shown the way out and calling him Lord. Then it hits the young man. The monster becomes stronger with each life taken, and they, merging in it, become a deity. But he refuses to prolong the monster's life and plunges the knife into the chest of the alien. As it screams in pain, Amir starts to run and finds the well, which Roland is already climbing. Delighted by his appearance, Roland extends his hand to the young man, and they climb the tall vertical shaft, inserting the remaining explosives into the crevices. But then the monster catches up to them and climbs after. Roland realizes they can't escape and asks Amir to turn the handle of the explosive box. Understanding that they are doomed to die with the alien, Amir feverishly turns the handle, but there is no explosion. Then Roland descends to his comrade, takes the box, turns the handle himself, and when he sees everything is ready, encourages the young man. They both grab the handle. The explosion engulfs both the alien and the miners, forever sealing the entrance to the cursed dungeon. A genre movie that doesn't aspire to serious contemplation. An oldest time story about human greed and the insatiable thirst for knowledge and glory turns into an exciting ride. Moreover, the film reminds us once again that even underground and in a fight with a monster, it's important to remain human.